Hello guys and welcome to another video and this video marks the beginning of a new video series that I'll be bringing to this channel on the lead up to ExileCon. This is going to be the Keystone Highlight Series where I'll be going over very specific keystones, looking at exactly how they work, their advantages and disadvantages and looking at all the interactions that you can make use of when you're using these keystones. And this series aims to cover both the very popular keystones that are being used a lot and some of the very unpopular keystones and talk a bit about why those are not being picked very often and some of the niche use cases for those ones too. And we're beginning the series with Tempered by War, a timeless keystone. This means it's acquired from socketing a timeless jewel into your passive tree and these jewels dominate passive skills within their radius, including keystones which will be transformed into a new keystone the type of which depends on the timeless jewel that you're using and the name on the jewel itself. Tempered by War is granted by the Lethal Pride Timeless Jewel when it's in the name of Rakiata. And this keystone has 50% of cold and lightning damage taken as fire damage and 50% less cold resistance and 50% less lightning resistance. So this is a damage taken as mechanic, specifically shifting a portion of cold and lightning damage you take into fire damage. And it's for all damage, not just hits. Let's first talk about the downside of this keystone, the 50% less cold and lightning resistance. This modifier is essentially going to reduce the efficacy of your cold and lightning resistance modifiers above 0% resistance by half. So for example, to go from 0% cold resistance to 75% cold resistance, you're going to need a total of 150% cold resistance. This modifier also halves your negative resistances too. So if you'd normally have minus 60% lightning resistance and you spec'd into this keystone, you'd now have minus 30% lightning resistance. For this reason, using this keystone with Doryani's prototype, a body armor which benefits from having high amounts of negative lightning resistance, is not advisable since your investment into negative lightning resistance is diminished in the same way as positive resistance would be, and therefore it's much more costly to achieve high amounts of negative lightning resistance. However, because this modifier also halves negative resistance, this means that any resistance gained below 0% is essentially treated with normal efficacy, so you'd need the normal 60% resistance to go from minus 60 to 0%. In total, a Tempered by War build that wants to cap Lightning and Cold Resistance will need a total of 210% of each resistance to reach 75%. That's a significantly higher resistance investment compared to the 135% needed to normally cap each resistance. Alright, that's the downside of the Keystone, but what about the good part, the reason that you use the Keystone in the first place? 50% of Cold and Lightning damage taken as Fire damage. This is a great modifier because it's going to allow you to scale maximum fire resistance and benefit from that scaling even when you're taking cold or lightning damage. For example, if you had 85% fire resistance and 75% cold resistance and you took a hit of 5000 cold damage, half of the damage would be mitigated by the cold resistance. So 2500 damage reduced by 75% is 625 cold damage taken. And the other half is taken as fire, so 2,500 damage reduced by 85% is 375 fire damage taken for a total of 1,000 damage taken. Therefore, your effective resistance against cold or lightning damage is going to be the mean value of the specific resistance and your fire resistance. In the example we just showed, the mean value of fire resistance and cold resistance is 80%. So your effective resistance against cold damage is 80% because half is being mitigated at 75% and the other half at 85%. But it's not just about damage mitigation because shifting damage so that you take damage as a different type is very important for a few other aspects as well. Firstly, let's talk about non-damaging ailments. Non-damaging ailments such as chill or shock are based on damage taken and by default they are tied to a specific damage type. For example, by default only lightning damage can shock. So if you take a hit of lightning damage and that enemy either hits you with a critical hit or has a chance to shock, you can be shocked based on how much lightning damage you took from that hit, based on ailment threshold. However, if you're using Tempered by War, half of that lightning damage hit would be taken as fire damage, and that half of the damage can no longer shock you by default. So the other portion of the damage that was taken as lightning damage will therefore inflict a weaker shock. Importantly, if the hit was a critical hit, Half of the damage that was taken as fire damage can't ignite you either. 
This is because damaging ailments are based on the total damage of a hit rather than the actual damage taken. Since the total damage of the hit was made up of 100% lightning damage, the hit can't inflict ignite by default, even if half of the damage is being taken as fire. Be aware that a non-damaging ailment that's tied to fire damage does exist however and it's called Scorch, and it lowers all of your elemental resistances based on the total fire damage taken from a hit. So if you encountered an enemy that has an inherent chance to Scorch, and they deal a hit of cold or lightning damage to you, that damage usually wouldn't be able to inflict Scorch by default, but because you're using Temper by War and half of the damage is being taken as fire damage, that half of the damage can now inflict Scorch. There's also another very strong benefit to the damage taken as mechanic, and that's avoiding damage type specific penetration. For example, you're fighting the Uber Shaper boss and you're using Tempered by War. The Shaper's ball ability deals pure cold damage and has cold penetration. When this ability hits you, half of the damage is taken as fire damage, and therefore half of the damage cannot penetrate your cold resistance anymore, as it's being mitigated by your fire resistance instead. Be careful with mechanics where penetration is added globally to monsters. For example, in Expedition Encounters, you can activate a remnant that grants fire penetration to all of the monsters. You probably don't want to do this while you're using Tempered by War, because now even part of the cold and lightning damage that you're taking will be able to penetrate your fire resistance, so watch out for that. On a similar note, let's talk about this boss, the Black Star. Some of you may have seen Waggle lose his hardcore character to this boss earlier on in this league. It was an Ignite Reap Chieftain, and I think it was like level 97 or 98. And you guys are thinking, how on earth did he lose his character to this boss at that level? We're also talking about Waggle, one of the best hardcore players in the game. So the boss arena is split into two halves. You have a red half and a blue half which rotates around during the encounter. And standing in each half applies a stacking buff and debuff on you. Standing in the red half, you gain stacks of Annihilating Light which makes you take more fire damage and less cold damage. And for the blue half, you gain Crushing Darkness, which does the opposite. You take more cold damage and less fire damage. And the boss has two main abilities, Astral Avalanche, which deals pure cold damage, and Solar Flare, which deals pure fire damage. And it's well telegraphed which ability is being used, and they are never used at the same time. So one of the strategies is, of course, to stack the correct buff for each ability so that you take a lot less damage of the type that's being dealt to you. And so, Waggle's Chieftain was using Tempered by War. I'm sure you guys can see where this is going. He played the fight like anyone else would do. He stacks the Annihilating Light debuff right before Astral Avalanche, so he was taking a lot less cold damage. But the problem is, the buff also makes you take more fire damage, and since he was using Tempered by War, half of the cold damage from the Astral Avalanche ability was taken as fire damage, and so that half did a massive amount of damage and basically just one-shot his character. The moral of this story, if you're using Temper by War and you want to fight this boss, either deal enough damage to kill the boss before it does anything, or better advice still, just unspec the keystone before the fight, it will make your life much easier. So how can you make the most out of this keystone and really benefit from its effect? Well, as we talked about earlier, you can now effectively increase your damage mitigation for cold and lightning damage by just scaling your maximum fire resistance, and since you're going to be wanting to do that, you can also consider shifting a large amount of physical damage that you take into fire damage as well. This is also one of the reasons that Chieftain is so popular when using Temper by War, because the Tassadio Cleansing Water Notable not only makes you take 20% of physical damage from hits as fire damage, but it also grants a huge amount of fire resistance, which helps free up your suffix slots to help you cap your other resistances. And since you'll likely be using Purity of Fire to improve your maximum fire resistance, there's the Purity of Fire modifier that you can use on a Watcher's Eye, which rolls up to 10% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. There's also the same modifier that rolls up to 12%, but you'll need to use Purity of Elements to benefit from that one. You can also get a large amount of physical damage taken as fire damage on a Rare Helmet. You can find helmets with 10% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage in Delve nodes that drop fire-related items, and Corel in Betrayal also drops helmets with a similar modifier. However, his modifier has a roll, but the max roll is still 10%. You can then combine one of these helmets with an Eater of Worlds Eldritch Implicit that grants a percentage of physical damage taken as fire. This goes up to 8% for a total of 18% possible from the helmet slot alone. You can roll a prefix modifier on rare Elder and Warlord influenced body armors, which has a portion of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. 
These go up to 15% on a tier 1 mod, or 18% on an elevated mod. And there's also the Graficious Betrayal mod, which grants a portion of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage, and another portion taken as lightning damage. The Unveiled version rolls up to 9% of each for a total of 18%, while the Crafted version rolls up to 6% of each for a total of 12%. You can also consider using this unique body armour, the Cloak of Flame. This was significantly buffed in 3.19, and the stat that we're interested in here is the 40% of physical damage taken as fire damage. This is a hefty amount of shifted physical damage, and this one is not specific to hits, so it'll work for things like Bleed and Corrupted Blood as well which is really, really nice. And then there's this unique shield, the Dawnbreaker. Now this is one of the best unique items in all of the game. It's extremely useful on a large amount of builds, and this one drops exclusively from the Searing Exarch boss. This shield has incredible synergy with Temper by War, since it has three individual modifiers on it, which allow you to take a portion of physical, lightning, and cold damage as fire damage. All of these mods roll between 10 and 20%, so it's quite difficult to get a good roll for all of them. But since you're essentially stacking more of the same modifiers, and they stack additively too, this will continue to improve your effective resistance against cold and lightning damage. Importantly as well, these modifiers are once again not specific to hits, so it will work for all of the damage that you take of those types, even damage over time. And this is where things are going to get very expensive if you're in Trade League because there's also this jewel, Sublime Vision. This is a drop that's exclusive to the Uber Shaper encounter. I believe it's about a 4% drop rate, so it's quite rare. But the thing is, this jewel drops with a random modifier that's tied to a specific aura, and there's 17 different variations, and we're only interested in one of them. That's the Purity of Fire mod. This has a heavy downside of disabling other auras from working, but you will still be able to reserve mana for other non-aura skills, like Heralds or Petrified Blood. This provides up to 40% aura effect, so that's going to be really nice in helping you get to maximum fire resistance of 90%. And then it has this very special modifier, 30% of cold and lightning damage taken as fire damage while affected by purity of fire. As I said, this will be expensive. This variation of Sublime Vision Jewel alone is about 50 divines right now in Softcore Trade Crucible. But if you can get a max roll Dawnbreaker with 20% cold and lightning damage taken as fire damage, and then you combine that with the Purity of Fire variant of this jewel and the Tempered by War Keystone, you now have 100% of cold and lightning damage taken as fire. It works for all damage, even damage over time, and now you no longer care about the less resistance downside from Tempered by War because you no longer need any cold or lightning resistance. You're going to be able to fully ignore any cold or lightning penetration, and your effective cold and lightning resistance is going to be equal to your fire resistance, which you should be able to quite comfortably get to 90%. You can of course also take a look at Avian Twin Talismans. These implicit modifiers can make you take 50% of cold or lightning as fire damage, but be aware that this is only for hits and doesn't include damage over time. Once you have a decent amount of damage taken being shifted into fire damage, you can start considering some modifiers to fire damage taken. For example, Arctic Armor, a reservation skill that grants 20% less fire damage taken from hits while you're stationary. This one could also be used with the Sublime Vision Jewel from earlier, because it's not an aura. There's also the Formless Flame Helmet that drops from Zorf related Breach content. This one was completely overhauled in 3.21, and it now has a massive flat fire damage taken modifier that can roll up to minus 200 on a max roll. Flat damage modifiers are quite rare, and one this large is practically unheard of, Damage taken modifiers come after mitigation, so once the damage has passed through your resistance and any other applicable mitigation, this flat modifier will then be applied, so it's actually quite effective. And on the topic of Temper by War, we should also briefly talk about the Juggernaut's Unbreakable Ascendancy Notable. This node makes 8% of your armour apply to elemental damage taken from hits, but the important thing here is that the armour application is done separately for each damage type. Therefore, a Juggernaut using Unbreakable with Tempered by War will be able to split cold and lightning damage taken into multiple types of damage, and each damage type will have the armor calculation applied separately. This is strong because armor is more effective against smaller hits. Lastly, we can't talk about Tempered by War without also mentioning Mahu Zottle's Machination. This is a unique shield that drops exclusively from the Ultimatum Trial Master boss, 
and it just grants a whole bunch of keystones. I won't go into great detail about the interaction of all of these keystones as that's another full video entirely. But very importantly, this shield grants Divine Flesh, a keystone that was previously only obtainable from a Timeless Jewel, which means you can have both Temper by War and Divine Flesh at the same time. Divine Flesh makes 50% of all of the elemental damage that you take be taken as Chaos Damage instead, and it gives you a nice bonus of 5% maximum Chaos Resistance as well. If you're using these two keystones together, you can fully ignore Cold and Lightning Resistance and only focus on Fire and Chaos Resistance. And this is far cheaper than the Sublime Vision version, with the cheapest Mario Zottle's Machination Shield on Softcore Trade Crucible being about 5 Divines. Not only that, but with this setup you're also very strong against Fire Penetration, since 50% of Fire damage that you take will be taken as Chaos Damage. And the shield also grants a keystone that can't be found anywhere else, and that's Everlasting Sacrifice, which grants plus 5% to all maximum resistances for 4 seconds every time you reach full energy shield. And there's several methods you can use to actually gain that energy shield and keep this up permanently, but as I said, that's for another video. But essentially, this will also make it easier for you to achieve the 90% fire and chaos resistance that you'll be wanting to get. And this combination can be used with the Juggernaut's Unbreakable and the Armor and Energy Shield Mastery that applies 10% of armor to chaos damage taken from hits, or the fourth vow. There's a lot of combinations you can use to make a near invincible character. Overall, Temper by War is a great keystone that you can use to build an incredibly durable character, and you have a huge list of mechanics that you can combine with it to make this keystone even stronger. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe for more videos like this one in the future, as I'll be continuing the Keystone Highlight series on the lead up to Exile Con, and you can hit the bell button if you really, really want to know when those videos go live. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned and stay safe.